Hi, this is Tanya from SUNY Downstate Health Sciences University. We made this video to provide information about what to do if you or someone in your home gets sick. But first, let me say something. The coronavirus is scary. I'm scared. And it is creating enormous fear and anxiety. But let me remind you that 80% of the people who get COVID-19 will only have mild or moderate symptoms. And you will be able to recover at home without medical care, okay? So please do not go to the emergency room unless you are severely ill. For example, you have difficulty breathing or your lips have turned blue or you have pain in your chest. If you have only mild or moderate symptoms or you think like, oh, I've had a bad cold like this before, please stay home. Stay home and save lives and keep healthcare access available for those with more severe illness. So we want you to do a couple of things when you stay home. We want you to monitor and treat your symptoms. Uh, use fever reducing medicine for fever, uh, maybe uh, something to uh, soothe your dry cough. Uh, and you wanna watch your shortness of breath. You need to call your doctor, you need to make a plan for how you're going to take care of yourself or take care of these COVID uh, symptoms. Don't, don't forget to also ask your doctor about how you can take care of some other health issues if you have other uh, chronic health issues. What you should absolutely not be doing is you should not be going out. Under no circumstances should you be going out of your house unless to get medical care. And you should not be taking public transportation. If you live in a home or an apartment that has a lot of people, what you should think about doing is what we call home isolation. This is where the sick person stays in a room, which is designated as the sick person room or the sick room, and you let them stay in there and hopefully it will contain the sickness or if they have COVID-19 to just that particular space. Now, if that sick room is shared with other people, you're gonna to have to negotiate exactly which room will be the sick room. Um, if you have a separate bathroom, you should also allow the sick person to just use that bathroom and keep the healthy members of your family uh, using the other bathroom. We should not be snuggling up with our pets because Pets can also get COVID-19 and, you know, our pets, you know, they'll go anywhere and any family member to get their belly rubbed. So the other thing is, even if you are accustomed to having particular visitors come to your house all the time, when you are sick or when someone is sick, there should be no visitors at all in your home. If you live alone, you also want to consult, consult your doctor and to make sure that you have a clear plan for how you want to monitor your health while you're in isolation or quarantine. You want to create a plan for how you're going to stay in touch with others by phone, email, texting. Uh, one of those others might also be your provider. You want to figure out uh, who could be on your care team just in case you need help getting things. Is that going to be your family, your friends, your neighbor? And if you suspect that you might have severe symptoms, uh, if you get COVID-19, you might in advance want to think about identifying someone to be your healthcare proxy. This is someone who can make healthcare decisions for you in case you are unable to do so yourself. When to seek medical attention. I said before, only go to the emergency room if you think that you are severely ill, because if you don't, you will sure get COVID-19. So these are some really key warning signs that suggest like immediately go to the emergency room. So if you're having extreme difficulty breathing, if you have real persistent pain and pressure on your chest, if you are experiencing confusion or if your family members or your roommates are saying you're just like, you know, you're really out of it in the morning and, and it took us forever to get you up. Or finally, if you're having 
bluish lips or blue in your digits or bluing in your face, this is a sign that you're not getting enough oxygen and that there's some, something happening within your respiratory system and you should go to the emergency room immediately. But before you do, you wanna call either your doctor or this emergency room and, and tell them um, what's going on. The reason why is that you might actually live close to a smaller hospital that might not have the resources to be able to take care of you. SUNY Downstate is a COVID-19 only site. Um, however, still during the day, the governor is moving resources around. So you want to be able to talk to the people at the ER and give them a heads up so that they know that you're coming because they might be able to steer you to a place that has more resources. Finally, regardless of your immigration status or your ability to pay, if you need medical care, you call 311, or you can also call 844-NYC-4NYC. Tell the dispatch or the person you're talking to on 311 that you think you have COVID-like symptoms, and if possible, wear a mask on your face to protect the first responders. Now, if there's someone sick in your house, there are other things that you can do to prevent the spread of the virus. For example, you can wash your hands. I know we say this all the time, but this is the most important thing that you can do. Wash your hands often, all the time. If you're the sick person, all the time. If you're with a person who's sick, all the time. You wanna wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. It's gonna feel like forever, say ABCs or something like that. And you wanna rub your hands vigorously, rub your digits, get your wrists, get the in-between, because this rubbing action actually gets rid of the virus. Um, so if you're sneezing, coughing, Absolutely, wash your hands. And if you don't have soap and water available, you can use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. And finally, you want to avoid touching your face. You wanna to avoid touching your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. If you are coughing and sneezing, you want to <coughs> cover your cough like they do, they teach the kids in school, do the chicken wing, or use a tissue when you are coughing. You wanna throw that tissue away, don't leave it around for someone else to pick up because you don't wanna give them COVID that way. And again, you want to wash your hands. You want to also clean and disinfect all of the areas in your, your home or apartment that are frequently touched. You wanna to use a disinfectant or dil, um, diluted bleach. You wanna use cover those areas that get touched all the time, like tables, doorknobs, light switches, especially that light switch behind uh, the refrigerator, uh, handles, uh, faucets, sinks, desks, keyboards, and please don't forget to also clean your phone. Our cell phones are disgusting. They're covered with all kinds of things. I won't gross you out, but they are disgusting. And in addition to that, clean the remote control. Everyone wants to monopolize this uh, remote control. Tablets, touch screens, and absolutely clean the sick room and the sick bathroom at least once a day. So we don't know about soft surfaces, how long the virus will last on uh, soft material. Um, but, you know, if people are not sitting on the carpet <laughs> and your rugs are fondling your drapes all the time, that's probably okay. Soft surfaces, like in terms of like a chair or a couch that people are sitting on. For those, you might want to use a fabric cleaner or a disinfectant that won't destroy the material. You also, if you have someone sick or you are sick, you want to avoid sharing items such as dishes, glasses, cups, utensils. You want to keep all that separate while you're sick or, or to ask your, the person who's sick to keep them separate. Some people might even use paper plates just to make it sort of easy in terms of keeping everything straight into the trash. But you want to definitely wash these dishes and these things thoroughly. Now, if you have a shared space. Not everybody has more than one uh, bathroom in their apartment or home. So if you're sharing a bathroom and there is a person in the house who is sick, you wanna clean that bathroom every time after they've used it, okay? 
And if you have like a shared living room and that sick roommate is coming out of their sick room and they're going to the kitchen, you want to keep that shared common space, like maybe a living room, like open up the windows if the uh, weather is permitting and to allow as much air to come through to circulate so that if there are any respiratory droplets carrying the COVID-19 that they are moving hopefully out. Um, we now suspect that COVID-19 can be transmitted in certain body fluids. Those are like blood, stool, saliva, sputum, mucus, vomit, urine. Uh, we are now also recommending that you, when you flush the toilet, that they close the lid because, you know, there's all this water that kind of comes up uh, from the toilet and those water droplets can also carry the virus. You want to, if you are cleaning the bathroom for the sick person, that person should wear a face mask and gloves and you should immediately remove any linen or anything that has body fluids on it from the sick person and immediately remove it and wash it. In terms of laundry, so uh, whether you are going out to do your laundry or you're doing laundry in your building or you're doing laundry in your home or apartment, key thing is to not shake it. Some people sh like to shake out their laundry before. What that does is if there is COVID-19 on these materials, it releases it into the air. You wanna use the warmest water that you can and you want to dry things completely. Um, if there's a sick person in the house, yes, you can wash their laundry with yours. Maybe not if there's body fluid, you want to uh, keep those um, items and wash those separately. But if it's just a t-shirt or a pair of sweats, absolutely, you can wash your clothes and the sick person's clothes together. Um, and the final thing is you want to make sure that you also disinfect the clothes hamper, especially if it's a clothes hamper that's... Um, the sick person's clothes hamper. Um, we are now recommending that whenever you go out in public, but you should not be going out in public because you are sick and you should be home, but when you go out in public, you should be wearing a cloth face covering. And if there is someone sick in the house, you should be also wearing a cloth face covering in your home or apartment if there is a sick person, okay? And these are not surgical masks, and these are not N95 respirators. Those are for healthcare workers, and this is, these are critical supplies that we need. If you are sick, wear a face mask to, mask to protect others. If you're taking care of someone who is sick, you wear a face mask. The CDC has given us a couple of recommendations for like how we can make these face masks with common household items. I'm not sure if a t-shirt is really the best thing because the material is, is kind of thin. Um, if you have any quilting fabric, that would be idea, ideal. But also you can do a face mask um, with a bandana. This one I like a lot. You put a little coffee filter in there, you get rubber bands, you wrap it around your ears. Awesome. Um, now, you've been home, you've monitored your symptoms, you're getting better. How long do you need to stay in before you can go out? So you can do that or stop home isolation when it's been at least seven days after your symptoms have started, that you have not had a fever for three days. And when I say that, I mean, when you wake up, you take your temperature in the morning. You can't take your temperature after you've taken medicine to reduce the fever. You need to have three consecutive days where you do not have a temperature. And, you know, it's probably time to not home isolate anymore if your symptoms have gotten better, if you no longer have shortness of breath or you have a cough. Some are also recommending that you continue to practice social distancing for another eight days just in case you might still have the coronavirus. So this is at SUNY Downstate. We have a call center that is, has been established for the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. It is open Monday through Friday. Um, on um, The hospital will call someone who is designated 
to be um, as a family member if you have a loved one who's going into the hospital. And that number is between 10 and 12 noon, or you can call between 6 and 7 p.m. The uh, call center is also open if um, you are a designated family member and you have a loved one who's in the hospital. You can call between 2 and 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. And the number is 718-270-2120. So please stay safe. Please stay healthy. Please, under no circumstances, go into the emergency room if you have mild or moderate symptoms. For sure, you will get COVID-19 and you need to only go in if you are severely ill. So please stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.